All right, let's get right into it. Your assigned problems may or may not have different randomized values. For best results, attempt the assignment on your own before watching these solutions. Students are encouraged to frequently pause the video to work out steps on their own before proceeding with the solutions. And here's the list of topics to be covered in this video. Problem one, we're gonna find the quotient and remainder when we do the polynomial division of x cubed minus nine x squared plus 23 x minus seven divided by x minus four. Now, if all we wanted to find was the remainder, we could use the remainder theorem. Since we're dividing by a linear term with leading coefficient one, specifically one x minus four, the remainder will be exactly f of four, where f is the numerator. But we need the quotient as well, so we may as well go ahead and do the polynomial division. So we go ahead and set up x minus four going into x cubed minus nine x squared plus 23 x minus seven. And we ask, if I want to cancel out x cubed, what do I need to multiply x minus four by? Okay, we're gonna keep doing that procedure, multiply by something to cancel out the remaining leading term, then subtract that product and keep going until you can't anymore because the degree of what you're working with is less than what you're trying to divide by. So if I want to cancel x cubed, I need to multiply x minus four by x squared. Multiplying x minus four by x squared produces x cubed minus four x squared. We then subtract that from the numerator. That cancels out the x cubeds, giving us minus five x squared plus 23 x minus seven. And then we pr repeat this procedure as long as we can. So what would you multiply x minus four by in an attempt to cancel out negative five x squared? You'd multiply by negative five x because when you multiply x minus four by negative five x, you'll get that negative five x squared. You will also get a plus 20 x. So now when we subtract that from what we still have, we'll have the linear term three x minus seven now we ask, what would you multiply x minus four by to cancel out the leading term three x? You'd multiply it by three, giving you three x minus 12. Once you subtract that, we now have a five. And now you could ask, what would I multiply x minus four by to cancel out five? However, you wouldn't be multiplying by any sort of constant or positive power of x. This is where we stop, when what we're left with, the constant term five, a degree zero polynomial, is of smaller degree than what we're trying to divide by, which was x minus four, a degree one polynomial. So now that we have that degree smaller than the denominator, we stop. We have found our remainder, it's five. And what we have produced up top here is the quotient, x squared minus five x plus three. Now our denominator x minus four was linear with leading coefficient one. Synthetic division is a viable approach in this situation. It involves exactly the same amount of actual work, just with less writing. So we set up our coefficients of our numerator, one, negative nine, 23, and negative seven. And then we set up what our denominator was, x minus four. So we put a four there. We bring down the one, we multiply it by four, we add those together to get minus five, we multiply by four, we add those together to get three, we multiply by four, we add those together to get five. Now these terms here are the coefficients of our quotient in descending order, x squared minus five x plus three, and this last term five is the remainder. Remember, however, synthetic division is only an option when you are dividing by x minus a. Now that could be a plus if a is negative, but it has to be a linear term with leading coefficient one. Otherwise, if you're dividing by something of degree larger than one or with a leading coefficient that isn't one, you're gonna have to use polynomial long division. Problem two, let's find the quotient and remainder when we divide four x cubed minus two x squared plus six x minus three by two x squared plus one. Now, since the denominator is not linear, synthetic division will not be an option. So we're gonna set up our polynomial long division, but remember to account for any coefficients that are zero. Specifically in the denominator there, we have two x squared plus one. There is a linear term with coefficient zero. So we set up two x squared plus zero x plus one going into four x cubed minus two x squared plus six x minus three. What would you multiply two x squared by in order to cancel out the four x cubed? You'd multiply by two x. This gives us four x cubed plus zero x squared plus two x. When we subtract it, we cancel out the leading term. Now we have negative two x squared plus four x minus three. What would you multiply by? You'd multiply by negative one so that you'll get that negative two x squared. When we do this subtraction here, we now have four x minus two. Since we have something whose degree is smaller than what we're trying to divide by, the algorithm stops and this is our remainder. 
and then the thing up top that we produced is the quotient. So our quotient was 2x minus 1, and the remainder is 4x minus 2. Moving on to problem 3, we have the function f of t equals 4t to the fourth minus 12t cubed plus 8t squared. We're going to be asked to find both the f-intercepts and t-intercepts and present them as ordered pairs. Now for the f-intercept, we simply need to set t equal to 0. We compute f of 0, we get out 0. So we plugged in 0, we got out 0. That's the ordered pair, 0, 0. For t-intercepts, however, we're going to set f equal to 0. So now we have 0 is equal to 4t to the fourth minus 12t cubed plus 8t squared. We need to solve this for t. We have a polynomial equal to 0. We're going to factor. One thing you can pull out is a t squared from every term. You can also pull out a 4 from every term, so we're going to do that. Factoring 4t squared out of every term leaves behind t squared minus 3t plus 2. This resulting quotient factors pretty directly as t minus 2, t minus 1. If you didn't spot that, you could always use the quadratic formula. So we have 0 is equal to 4t squared times t minus 2 times t minus 1. This product is 0 exactly when one of its terms is 0. 4t squared is 0 only when t is 0. t minus 2 is 0 only when t is 2. t minus 1 is 0 only when t is 1. So altogether, we have found that the function will be 0 when t is either 0, 1, or 2. So plugging in 0, 1, or 2 produces an output of 0. This gives us three ordered pairs, 0, 0, 1, 0, and 2, 0. Problem 4, let's find all the zeros of the function f of x, 2x cubed minus 4x squared minus 26x minus 20. All of the coefficients are even. This is a nice little coincidence. We're just going to factor out 2. This will make our following work a little simpler because the coefficients are now a bit smaller. There's a commonly taught technique, by the way, sometimes I've heard it referred to as factoring by grouping, where you have this degree 3 polynomial and the suggestion would be take the cubic and linear term and factor out an x. Factoring an x out just from the cubic and linear term gives you x squared minus 13. Then the hope is that the resulting thing you've created, which is just quadratic and constant, can somehow be compared to the quadratic and constant that you didn't factor anything out of. In this example, however, there's nothing to do. We have a quadratic and constant factor of x squared minus 13, and the quadratic and constant that we left alone are 2x squared minus 10. There's no commonality here, okay? So, a lot of students tend to believe that factoring by grouping will always work. In fact, it hardly ever works. If you just create a polynomial, it is exceptionally unlikely that this technique will work. So I advise students, just don't do it. It barely ever works out in the real world. It's handy when it does, but it's really just something that happens when we make examples to use that technique. Anyway, continuing with problem four, we have f of x equals two times x cubed minus two x squared minus 13 x minus 10. We want to factor this function. We've already brought out the two, so our attention now turns to that cubic x cubed minus two x squared minus 13 x minus 10. That's what we want to factor. Now, all of the coefficients are integers, meaning we can use something called the rational roots theorem. If p over q is a rational number, which is a root, so p and q are two integers, and it's been written in reduced form, meaning there is no shared factor between p and q, then the numerator p must be a factor of the constant term, and the denominator q must be a factor of the leading coefficient. We are attempting to factor the polynomial x cubed minus 2x squared minus 13x minus 10, so the constant term is 10, I mean specifically negative 10, but up to finding integer factors, it doesn't matter. And the leading coefficient is 1. So what is the complete list of possible rational roots? Well, we're looking for p over q, where p is a factor of 10 and q is a factor of 1. So plus or minus 10 over 1, 5 over 1, 2 over 1, and 1 over 1. The denominator 1 can essentially be ignored, so the possible rational numbers that are roots are plus or minus 10, 5, 2, and 1. Now these cannot possibly all be roots. We have a degree 3 polynomial, so at most it has three different roots. Also, there might be irrational roots that don't appear in the list at all. What we can say, however, is that if there is a rational number which is a root, it has to be in that list. Now we have eight numbers to check, plus or minus 10, 5, 2, and 1. 
By brute calculation, and I simply suggest try the easiest numbers first, if you plug in 1 into this polynomial, it will not be a root, but negative 1 is. So we have found a root, negative 1. Okay, so if negative 1 is a root of that cubic polynomial x cubed minus 2x squared minus 13x minus 10, that means x plus 1 must be a factor of that polynomial. So we have a linear factor whose leading coefficient is 1. We're going to use synthetic division to find the quotient. So we set up the coefficients of our cubic, 1, negative 2, negative 13, negative 10. We are attempting to divide by x plus 1, aka x minus negative 1. So we're going to put a negative 1 off to the left there. And now we just do synthetic division. Bring down coefficients, multiply by the number outside, and add the result to the next coefficient. So we bring down 1, we multiply by negative 1. We add those together, we multiply by negative 1. We add those together, we multiply by negative 1. We add those together and get out 0. That, that means the remainder is 0. This is exactly as expected. When you have a proper root, it should produce something that can be factored out with 0 remainder. The quotient is simply these numbers we produced, 1, negative 3, negative 10. Those are the coefficients of the quotient in order of their power of x. So the quotient is 1x squared minus 3x minus 10. So once we factor out x plus 1, what's left behind is x squared minus 3x minus 10. Our progress so far is to represent f of x as 2 times x plus 1 times a quadratic x squared minus 3x minus 10. Now that we have worked our problem down until we have a quadratic bit, you can always use the quadratic formula to find the two roots, which gives you the two factors. This quadratic factor of x squared minus 3x minus 10, since its leading coefficient is 1, we're essentially looking for two numbers that multiply to negative 10 but add to negative 3. In other words, minus 5 and plus 2. So we produce the factors 2 times x plus 1 times x minus 5 times x plus 2. Therefore, we can find the roots of f by setting each of these factors equal to 0. If x plus 1 is 0, then x is negative 1. If x minus 5 is 0, then x is 5. And if x plus 2 is 0, then x is negative 2. So here are all the zeros of that cubic polynomial we started with. In problem 5, we're going to be given some numbers, and we determine whether each number is rational or irrational. Well, what about the square root of 49 and the square root of 73? These are the two numbers we have to check. A nice thing to know is that when you take the square root of an integer, either you get out another integer, or if you don't, the result is definitely irrational. So since 7 squared is 49, the square root of 49 is 7. That's an integer, and integers are rational numbers. Now the square root of 64 is 8, and the square root of 81 is 9, and 73 is somewhere in between. That means, because the square root function is increasing, that the square root of 73 is somewhere in between 8 and 9. So it's not an integer, it is in between 8 and 9. And therefore, due to the fact mentioned above, since the square root of 73 is not an integer, it must be irrational. For problem 6, we're asked to find all zeros of the function f of x equals 6x cubed minus 7x squared plus 1. Again, we have a polynomial whose coefficients are integers. We're going to use the rational roots theorem. If p over q is a rational number, two integers, in reduced form, no shared factors, then the numerator p must be a factor of the constant term, and the denominator q must be a factor of the leading coefficient. Our constant term is 1, and our leading coefficient is 6. By the way, this gives us a list of possible rational roots. It's possible that a cubic has only irrational roots. Now there is a formula like the quadratic formula to find them, it's called Cardano's formula, but you never want to use it, and if you ever need it, you should just look it up. No one memorizes it. So let's look at the possible rational roots. Well, the only factors of 1 are plus or minus 1, and the only factors of 6 are plus or minus 1, 2, 3, and 6, so we have a total of 8 possible rational roots, plus or minus a sixth, a third, a half, or 1. We now plug these in to determine which of them are or are not roots, and I suggest start with the easiest number, which is 1, and in fact, x equals 1 is a root. If x equals 1 is a root, we can factor out x minus 1. Synthetic division is an option here because we're factoring out something of the form x minus a. So we're going to use synthetic division to factor x minus 1 out of the polynomial. Don't forget coefficients that are 0, specifically 
the linear term in 6x cubed minus 7x squared plus 1 is 0x. So when we set up the coefficients for our polynomial, we have a linear term with coefficient 0. We're dividing by x minus 1. We put 1 on the left. And very quickly, here's how the synthetic division works out. Observe at the end, we have a remainder of 0, as expected. Otherwise, the 6 minus 1 minus 1 give us coefficients of our factor. Okay, the last term will be its constant term, and you work up from there. So after we factor out x minus 1, we have 6x squared minus x minus 1, and we need to factor that quadratic. It's a quadratic whose leading coefficient is not 1. I'm not a fan of guess and checking a whole bunch of stuff. I just default to the quadratic formula in this case, where little a is 6, little b is minus 1, and little c is minus 1 as well. If you work through the quadratic formula, you'll get that the two roots are 1 half and a negative 1 third. We were only asked to find the roots of the function, by the way, so we're done. Okay, the roots are 1, 1 half, and minus 1 third. If we wanted to factor the function, however, we will have found three factors, x minus 1, x minus 1 half, and x plus 1 third, times an unknown constant, and the constant will be 6 to produce the correct leading coefficient. For problem 7, we're going to find the zeros and fully factor the cubic polynomial f of x equals x cubed minus x squared minus 11x plus 3. We're going to include factors for irrational and complex zeros presented exactly not with decimal approximations. In other words, your calculator will be useless here. The rational roots theorem does apply because we have a polynomial whose coefficients are all integers. Any rational number which happens to be a root must be of the form a factor of the constant term 3 over a factor of the leading coefficient 1. There's not that many factors, plus or minus 3 over 1 or plus or minus 1 over 1. So we have four rational numbers that might be roots, and if we simply plug them in to test if they are, 1, negative 1, and 3 are not roots, but negative 3 is. This tells us that x plus 3 is a factor of the polynomial, and we're going to factor it out using synthetic division. Our coefficients are 1, negative 1, negative 11, and 3, and we're dividing out x plus 3, so we put a negative 3 over there on the left. Working out the synthetic division, we get a remainder of 0. This is a good way to check that we really did have a proper factor. And with that 1 minus 4, 1, that tells us that what is left behind, the quotient, is x squared minus 4x plus 1. So we've gone ahead and factored x plus 3 out of our cubic, and that left behind x squared minus 4x plus 1. We now have a quadratic that we want to factor. If you tried to do this by hand without using the quadratic formula, you might be looking for two numbers that multiply to 1 and add to minus 4, and it's going to be tough to find those without just using the quadratic formula. If you work it all out, the two roots are 2 plus or minus root 3. This means we have found our factors and all of our roots. So the roots are negative 3, 2 plus root 3, and 2 minus root 3. There they are. And our factors are x plus 3, x minus one of the roots 2 plus root 3, and x minus the other root 2 minus root 3. This would have leading coefficient 1 if we distributed it, and our original polynomial had leading coefficient 1, so there is no constant factor that we need to find, so we have found our factored form. In problem 8, let's find all the real zeros of this degree 4, or quartic, polynomial. f of x is x to the 4th plus 4x cubed minus 9x squared minus 30x minus 18. We are, however, given, and this is tremendously helpful, that x plus 1 and x minus 3 are factors, meaning negative 1 and positive 3 are roots. So if x plus 1 is a factor, i.e. x minus 1 is a root, we can factor it out using synthetic division. We get a remainder of 0, as we should, and that tells us that what remains is x cubed plus 3x squared minus 12x minus 18. x minus 3 is also a factor of f, and it certainly cannot be factored out of the thing we just took out, x plus 1, so it must factor out of the cubic quotient. So we set up synthetic division to factor x minus 3 out of that cubic quotient of x cubed plus 3x squared minus 12x minus 18. Remainder of 0 tells us that it does factor out evenly, and what's left behind is x squared plus 6x plus 6. So here we are. We've taken our given factors of x plus 1 and x minus 3, factored them out of the quartic polynomial we started with, and what remains is this quadratic quotient x squared plus 6x plus 6. And if you want to factor a quadratic or find its roots, you can always use the quadratic formula. Hacking through the quadratic formula here will give us two roots of negative 3 plus or minus root 3. 
Therefore, we have found roots negative 1 and 3, those were given to begin with, and the two roots we found are negative 3 plus root 3 and negative 3 minus root 3. Since we have found four zeros of a degree 4 polynomial, we are done. There are no more to find. In problem 9, we're simply asked to use a numerical solver to find all the real solutions to this cubic equation. x cubed minus 4.1x squared minus 24.16x plus 72.956 equals zero. Here's a graph of this function, and there's not much for us to do here as a solution, it's just use a numerical solver, so that will depend on your particular calculator or software package. Now, here are the roots that happen to actually be exact, they're not approximations, negative 4.6, 2.6, and 6.1. I've rounded to two decimal points because that's what was asked, but these are actual exact numbers. Now there is a way you could find these roots by hand. Notice that we have decimals and they don't go on forever. Okay, the most decimal points we have in the constant term is three. So if I multiply this entire expression by a thousand, we will have all integers. Then you could use the rational roots theorem. Now our constant term would be 72,956 and our leading coefficient would be a thousand. So you would get an extremely long list of possible rational numbers but long is not the same thing as infinite. So with a long list of numbers to check, eventually you would find the rational roots. You'd have to check them all, but it's doable. Here they are as rational numbers, by the way, negative 23 fifths, 13 fifths, and 61 tenths.